Hello, this is Pastor Dwight Washington Sr. And on behalf of myself, my wife, and the entire Beach Grove Bible Church family, I want to thank you for visiting with us today. Hey, we are a growing family church that believes in teaching the Word of God in a powerful yet practical way. It is my hope that you were blessed during your visit with us today, and I want to personally invite you to visit with us again real soon. You know, quite honestly, I believe that we're literally the best church on the southeast side of our great city. Yeah, of course, I'm biased, but it's true. Hopefully, you got a chance to say hello to either myself or my wife or one of our staff persons, as we always try to say hello to everyone, but especially our guests. Hey, I don't want to take up any more of your precious time, so I'll end by saying that if you presently don't have a church home, I would ask you to consider Beach Grove Bible Church. We would be an awesome church for you to be a part of. You can check us out on the World Wide Web at beachgrovebiblechurch.org. That's beachgrovebiblechurch.org. There you will find out more information about our ministry, about myself, about my wife, about our staff persons, and about some of the things that we're trying to do to impact our community. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you again real soon. Good morning, Beach Grove Bible Church. It's time to get up and praise the Lord. Come on, you can get up on your feet just for a little bit. Here we go. Everybody sing it now. Bless, bless, bless. Say I'm blessed. Oh, it's not a season, but it's a new day. A fresh anointing. Supporting ministry at Beach Grove Bible Church is easy using our website, www.beachgrovebiblechurch.org. Looking in the menu at the top of the screen, click on Give. Here, you are presented with options on how to describe your giving. If you are partnering with us in our building fund, you can use the appropriate button to complete your one-time payment or your monthly dues. Need to give your tithes or offering? Type in the appropriate amount and click the Donate button. You can choose multiple items by clicking Continue Shopping and choosing another category to give before checking out. To finish checking out, type in your email address, first and last name, and phone number. Click Next. 
Complete the debit or credit card information and the billing address associated with the card. Click Next. Finish your giving by clicking Complete Order. For people wanting to mail in their giving, you can send your checks to Beach Grove Bible Church, P.O. Box 545, Beach Grove, Indiana, 46107. Thank you for your support in helping ministry move forward. Hello to all of you, uh, but especially to those of you who are part of the Beach Grove Bible Church family. Uh, we want to say that uh, we miss you all terribly, and uh, we cannot wait until such time as we are able to uh, fellowship again. We want to say a special thank you to those of you who continue your support. Uh, it is uh, greatly appreciated and it allows us to uh, continue doing the business of ministry. So thank you so much. Uh, big cyber hugs out to all of you. Uh, and we pray for you daily and we hope that you are well. Uh, without further ado, I want to get right into the word of the Lord today. Uh, it is found in the book of Jonah, Jonah chapter number one, verses number one through 13. And I'm going to be reading today from the New Living Translation of the Word of God. The New Living Translation of the Word. The Lord gave the message to Jonah, the son of Amittai, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold of the ship. So the captain went down after him. How can you sleep in all this? He shouted. Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. Then the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused the terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. Why has this awful storm come down on us? They demanded, who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? Jonah answered, I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. The sailors were terrified when they heard this, for he had already told them he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you do it? They groaned. And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, what should we do to stop this storm? Throw me into the sea, Jonah said, and it will become calm again. I know that this terrible storm is my fault. Uh, verse 13, instead of, instead the sailors rowed even harder to get the ship to, to the land, but the stormy sea was too violent for them and they couldn't make it. Well, if, if there's one thing uh, this, this quarantining has done, uh, it allows us time to uh, evaluate and reevaluate, uh, to do reflections on our life, to see uh, where it is that we're actually going uh, and who is doing life with us. Who do we have on our ship? Who do we have in our ship, in our relationship that are doing this journey called life with us? Uh, I've determined uh, that I refuse to come out of this quarantining in the same shape that I went in. Uh, I am I am I am steadfast on making myself better uh, while I'm here. Uh, I think this is an awesome opportunity uh, to 
to begin to walk in the things of God if you have not, uh, to begin to do things that are in line with your purpose. Uh, this quarantining uh, is going to, I believe it is going to end up being a blessing for many of us uh, in terms of pushing our lives and propelling our lives in a, in a more positive uh, direction. Part of the, uh, the, uh, the thing about fulfilling God's purposes, uh, part of that equation that goes in with that is the people that I'm in relationship with the people that are in, that are in my life. Uh, and so this week I want to, to extract some principles from, uh, the book of Jonah. Uh, and I want to start off by saying that you in fact are the CEO of your life. You are the CEO of your life. And as such, you have the responsibility to vet everybody that, uh, that comes into your life. It is the CEO's responsibility to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down uh, in terms of who we allow uh, to come uh, into our life. And part of the assignment or, or the, the, the questions that the CEO uh, must ask uh, as it relates to people who are coming into our lives is, number one, what is this person bringing to the relationship? What, what value are they adding to my life? And then number two is what this person is bringing to the relationship. Is it going to be enough to offset or counteract the drama that they're going to cause while they're here? <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to settle these uh, questions in my heart and in my mind. That is, that is the responsibility of the CEO. And who's the CEO? You are the, the, you are the CEO. Uh, I, was, I was listening to a, a CEO of an organization, and uh, he said uh, that everybody that is in his organization falls under one of four categories. He said they're either being trained, they're either being trained, retrained, repositioned, are they being removed? They, they, everybody in his organization, he said, falls under one of four categories. They're either being trained, retrained, uh, repositioned, or they're being removed. Uh, and I was meditating on that because uh, I, think, I think those four areas, uh, training, retraining, repositioning, and removing, can be applicable to your life and my life. What does what does training look like in real time? Well, to train means that I help you, I show you, I, I pour into you, uh, I I let you know what what my expectations are. And then number two, retraining. Sometimes things that we have been trained on, uh, for whatever reason, does not get done, and so there has to be retraining we have to we have to revisit the things that I was trained on right and then number three sometimes people have to be repositioned uh, relationships have to be uh, redefined if you will uh, we we as the CEO have to determine where everybody that's in our lives fit everybody, has a place, an assigned place in our in our life, and it's the CEO. Your you are the CEO of your life. It is your responsibility to determine where everybody goes. That's your responsibility. Unfortunately, for many of us, we have put too many insecure people in key positions in our life, and as a result. Every time God wants to do something in us, with us, and through us, they get an attitude uh, and start feeling some kind of way because God didn't check with them first. You as the CEO, has to, you have to have the courage to reposition those people. You cannot, you cannot afford, not in this season, you cannot afford to have insecure people in your inner circle. Because if you do, they're going to jam you up every time. You got to, you got to take the initiative 
and you got to get get the get the gall and the and the intestinal fortitude to reposition them and then unfortunately some people have to be removed it doesn't mean that you don't love them uh, that you don't care about them but for where god is taking you uh they, they just they just don't fit they may have gotten you to the place that you are maybe maybe god used them for that season to get you to where you are now, but he's going to use someone else to get you to your next place. I have a I have a book in my library. It's entitled "What Got Me Here Won't Get Me There," and that is that is so true in our lives that for every season, God seemingly has uh, different people who step up to the plate, and uh, they 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 are instrumental in helping us to get to our next place in life and in ministry. So uh, there, there are a few things that I want to, uh, to, to, to draw out of, out of our text today. So let's take a look at it. Jonah gets on the boat. So now we could say that there now is a relationship. There is, there is now a relationship and the relationship starts off okay. Every relationship starts off okay for the most part. Storms are the great revelator. Storms come, and one of the things that a storm does many times is it helps you determine who is supposed to be on your boat. Because people who are running from God will cause a storm for everybody that they come in contact with. I wish I wish I was at church. I would ask for an amen about right there. Uh, you have to be careful who you allow on the boat because anybody that comes into your life that is running from God, they, they are a living, walking storm. And if they have not caused the storm yet, it's only a matter of time before they do. So whose responsibility is it to monitor that? It is the CEO's responsibility to monitor that. I want you to, if you would, pay very, very close attention to Jonah chapter number one, verse number four. Because verse number four is a critical piece that I think we need to see. Verse number four, it says, let's read it together. It says, the Lord sent the storm. Let's read it again. I wanted to give you a second to pause and to, to think about that. Uh, it says, let's read it together. Verse number four, it says, the Lord sent the storm. This storm was not Satan. This storm was not Satan. So before you go running to get your oil and, and your uh, prayer claws, I just want to inform you that in this situation, they're not going to work because this storm was sent by God. And sometimes God will send storms to cause you to evaluate who it is you got on your ship. Because many of us have Jonas on our ships. And whose responsibility is it to vet everybody that's coming on our ship? It's your responsibility. You are the CEO. You are the CEO of your life. Uh, the, 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 the boat starts off and uh, uh, it starts off, it's, it's, it's nice and smooth, uh, but the storm came as a result of having somebody on the boat simply that wasn't supposed to be there. They're in a storm. Look at this. Look at what the text says. They're in a storm and Jonah is asleep. Now, how is it possible for someone to sleep to have peace during a storm of this magnitude. 
Waves are crashing. The boat is rocking. People are yelling instructions one to another. And in the midst of all that, the text clearly says that Jonah is asleep. How is it that he's able to sleep in all this commotion? It's easy because he has no skin in the game. It's not his boat and it's not his cargo. So whatever happens really doesn't affect him that much. He has no skin in the game. And people of God, there is, there is a danger in getting into relationships with people that don't have as much to lose as you do. I just said something right there. Uh, it's, it's, you, you, it's a dangerous thing to get into relationships with people that don't have as much to lose as you do. And many times it's hard uh, to identify who is causing the storm because we have a tendency to look at actions and not motives. We have a tendency to look at actions and not motives. Uh, Jonah was, he was asleep. So it, it appeared that he wouldn't have anything to do with this storm, but he is in rebellion and he is the total cause of this storm. And so the captain of the ship, the CEO of the ship, that's you. The captain comes to Jonah and he wakes him up and he asked him a few questions. I'm in verse number eight, Jonah chapter number one, verse number eight. He says, where do you work? He says, where are you from? And who is your family? Where do you work? Where are you from? Who is your family? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, people of God, you mean to tell me that we were out in the middle of a storm, in the middle of an ocean, we're in this 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 raging storm and there is somebody in this storm that I'm just now asking, where do you work? Let that sink in. I am just now asking, who is your family? I'm, I'm, I'm in a storm and I'm just now asking questions that I should have asked before I started the relationship. Look, once we get in the storm, it's too late. I should have asked you from the jump. I should have asked you on the first date. Tell me about yourself. Where do you work, Tommy? Where, where do you work? Who is your family? Do you, does your family have a history? of anger management? Does your family have a history of mental illnesses? Does your family have a history of diabetes? I need to find out something about you before we get in a storm. But the captain has waited until the storm is in full effect to ask Jonah, where do you work? Who is your family? People of God, people of God, people of God. I'm in a storm with somebody that I really don't even know. Had I known you were crazy, I would have never left you off the boat on the boat. But since but since me as the captain didn't do my due diligence, now I have, I have somebody on my boat that's crazy. I got somebody on my boat that's got anger issues. I got somebody on my boat 
that can't be faithful. People of God, people of God, it is amazing to me how we can become so emotional, emotional when it comes to making life decisions. That we, that we fill our lives up with people who mean us no good. Who are only out for themselves. Man, look at the text. Look at the text. Jonah, Jonah in verse 11, they're, now they're having a dialogue. Jonah and, and the men and the captain, they're all, they're all trying to figure out what we're going to do. They're having a dialogue. Now watch this. In verse number 11, the men asked Jonah, look, man, we just want this to be over. What do we need to do for all this to be over? Verse number 12, Jonah says, if you want this to be over, throw me overboard. Verse 13, it says, and they rode harder. Wait a minute. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Back that thing up. The conversation in verse 11, they're talking to Jonah. They say, hey, dude, what do we need to do for this to be over with? Verse number 12, Jonah says, if you want this to be over with, it's real simple. Throw me overboard. Verse 13 says, and they rowed harder. Wait a minute. Rowing harder is not the answer. No, getting a, getting a third job is not the answer. You're, you, oh my God, Th those are not the answer. Some of us know what the answer is. We know what we should do, but we, we don't have the courage to do what we know we should do. They told, Jonah told them, if you want this to go away, if you want this storm to stop, throw me overboard. And the text says that they rode harder. No, no. Rowing harder is not going to help you. You got to get rid of the problem. The problem was Jonah. And until you throw Jonah overboard, rowing harder is not going to help you. Getting another job is not going to help you. You got to get rid of the problem. And that's the CEO. That's you. That's the CEO's responsibility. Oh my God. They, 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 they all messed up, man. They, they are, they are all messed up. And I would have felt better about this passage. I would have, I would have, I would have felt totally different about this, these verses of scripture. If I had read in here where it says the storm came, they rode harder. Jonah looked out and saw they were rowing and he says, let me help you. I would have had people of God. I would have had a totally different take on this passage. If I would have read somewhere in, in there where Jonah offered to help. But there, every man, everybody on the boat, it's all hands on deck. They're all doing as much as they can, and you got one guy who's not doing anything. Can I tell you that, that no relationship can survive that kind of, that kind of inequity? They're given 100%. And Jonah is, is, is given 10. He's really not even doing anything. They're given 100%. And Jonah is not doing anything. In your own situation, in your circumstance, you're given 100%. And the other person in the relationship is given 30. The other person is given 20. No relationship, hear me well. No relationship can survive under those circumstances. Any relationship that, it, that has any chance of working has got to be 100% and 100%. I, I got to give 100% and you got to give 100%. If we don't, 
the relationship has no real chance of working. You, you have got to understand that your relationship will not survive with you doing all the work. I'm just going to put that right there. Your relationship will not survive with you doing all the work. And let me tell you this, you shouldn't have to. You, sh you should not have to. But what you are going to discover about people that you have into your life, that you bring into, that you let into, that you don't vet, what you what you're going to what you're going to discover, people of God, is that sometimes people will people will take advantage of you because you let them. Let, let me let me I'm gonna I'm gonna take a quick do, detour. I'll be right back. Uh, but one of the things that 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 really really grieves me real on a on a on a gut level this grieves me is I pull up to the gas station and the woman gets out she pumps the gas and and you got Nicodemus in the passenger seat taking a smoke break while you pump gas my goodness. Okay, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go into that because I'll go way off and then I won't I won't I won't uh, come back on my subject and I'll end up saying something I didn't mean. So 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 I'm going to but that grieves me. That grieves me. So in every relationship, if it's going to work, it has to be 100 percent, 100 percent. Let me close with this. Uh, my wife and I, we've got uh, Comcast for our cable provider and our internet. So uh, uh, we just got bas basic cable because we ain't ballers. Uh, so we, we just got the basic cable. So uh, I was thinking about getting uh, uh, HBO added. So I called Comcast. And uh, so I asked Comcast, I say, well, look, uh, I got basic cable and I'm thinking about adding HBO. And uh, they said, well, Mr. Washington, we would be glad to add HBO to your account. Uh, however, if we do, there is going to be an extra, there's going to be an extra expense because uh, HBO is one of our premium channels and you only have basic cable. So if we, we, we add HBO, it is going to require you to give more. Uh, some of, some of y'all are missing me. Uh, Comcast told me, if if you want to take this relationship to the next level, you are going to have to uh, you are going to have to come to the table with more. You're going to have to make more of a commitment because you're asking more of a commitment from us. So in order to get HBO, we're asking you to give us more money because the relationship has to be equitable. So I finished that transaction. I got off the phone and God spoke to my heart. He said, there are so many people in the body of Christ who have relationships where the people are paying for basic cable and they're giving them HBO, Cinemax, Showtime, and Stars. No relationship can make it under those circumstances. People of God, Use this time of quarantining. I pray, man, that 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 uh, that that you hear me. Use this time of quarantining, this this quarantine that we're under, this house arrest, if you will. Uh, use this time to evaluate your life and evaluate your circle. And you, as the CEO, that's you. You have to determine for the next place that God is taking you after we got get out of quarantine. For the next place that God is taking you, who is who do I have on my boat that I should have that I should not, never have let come on my boat? And then I've got to make some hard decisions because that's what the CEO does. The CEO has to make tough decisions. Man, if this made any sense to you at all, will you do me a favor in the comment section? Say this made a lot of sense. And would you please like and share? Uh, 
we we would really appreciate that if you would like and share. Uh, and I hope that uh, something I said uh, was a blessing to you. Um, I enjoyed our time together. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great rest of your day. Supporting ministry at Beach Grove Bible Church is easy using our website, www.beachgrovebiblechurch.org. Looking in the menu at the top of the screen, click on Give. Here, you are presented with options on how to describe your giving. If you are partnering with us in our building fund, you can use the appropriate button to complete your one-time payment or your monthly dues. Need to give your tithes or offering? Type in the appropriate amount and click the Donate button. You can choose multiple items by clicking Continue Shopping and choosing another category to give before checking out. To finish checking out, type in your email address, first and last name, and phone number. Click Next. Complete the debit or credit card information and the billing address associated with the card. Click Next. Finish your giving by clicking Complete Order. For people wanting to mail in their giving, you can send your checks to Beach Grove Bible Church, P.O. Box 545, Beach Grove, Indiana, 46107. Thank you for your support in helping ministry move forward. Thank <laughs> you.